We can calculate the density of an object if we know its weight and what we call its apparent weight when it is submerged in a liquid. And you are going to do this experiment for your at-home lab this week, okay? So, but we're, we're going to change the subject here. Instead of these little hex nuts, which are going to be um, hanging off of your green scale into water, we have a crown, okay? So a bargain hunter purchases a gold crown at a flea market. And when she gets home, she hangs that, um, that crown from a scale. So that's what's happening here. And finds that it weighs 7.84 newtons, okay? So this scale is reading 7.84 newtons when she attaches the crown to a scale and then gets the weight in newtons, just hanging that object in the air, okay? Then, she weighs the object, but this time submerging it in water. So this object is, is more dense than water, so if it weren't connected to the scale by a string or a hook, that object would sink to the bottom. But it's connected to the scale by a hook. The measurement that the scale measures is what we call the apparent weight of that object when it's submerged in the liquid. So when she submerges the crown in the liquid, then the reading on the scale is 6.86 newtons, okay? This is all we know, okay? And then we're asked, is the crown made of gold? Or essentially, what is the density of our crown? Equals question mark. And um, we know that the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. It's also one gram per centimeter cubed, so depending on how we set up the problem, we could use either one of those, okay? So, um, how are we gonna start this problem? Well, um, let's see. <laughs> we're gonna think about um, the, we're gonna think about um, the buoyant force that's acting on our object when it is submerged in the liquid, and we're gonna apply Newton's second law to this problem and the buoyant force in order to get at the density of the crown, okay? And you're gonna do the same thing to get at the density of these hex nuts that you have in your lab kit. So let's draw the free body diagram for our crown that's submerged in the water. So it has its mass times gravity pointing downward. Always this mass times gravity is pointing downward even if you're floating in a liquid, okay? And then we've got the buoyant force pushing upward on this object, okay? The buoyant force from the surrounding fluid. And we have the tension force pulling up. The tension force, because our crown is connected to the scale by a hook, and so the crown is feeling a tension force pulling upward. That tension force is gonna be exactly equal to what is being read on the scale, okay? So right here, this tension force is gonna be what's being read on the scale here, which we take to be what we call the apparent weight of our object when it is submerged, okay? So we've got these three forces acting on the object when it is submerged in the liquid. So if we do Newton's second law in the vertical direction, sum of all forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction, we're not accelerating, okay? So we've got our buoyant force upward, we've got the tension force upward from the scale, and we've got minus the mass times gravity of our object, okay? So, we're trying to find the density here of my crown. All right, I'm gonna move these two terms right here over to the other side. So then I'll have the buoyant force equals mg minus t. And our buoyant force is the density of our fluid that we're submerged in times the volume of my fluid displaced times gravity, and that equals mg minus t. We know the density of the fluid, that's um, the density of water, okay? We know gravity. Um, the only thing we don't know yet here is the volume of the fluid displaced. So we can use this equation to find the volume of our fluid that's displaced by the crown when we submerge it in water. So if I divide both sides by density times gravity, I have the volume of my fluid that's displaced equals mg minus t, this is our apparent weight, all over 
density of my fluid times g. The mass times gravity of the crown, we already know that. Over here, the mass times gravity of the crown, when it's just hanging naturally without being submerged in water, is 7.84 newtons. So this is its actual weight. And so that's what we can use right here for mg. So this is equal to 7.84 newtons minus the what we call the apparent weight or the tension pulling up on the crown when it's submerged in water. Um, that's what the scale reads when we submerge our object in water. So minus 6.86 newtons. And then we divide that by the density of my fluid. This time I'm gonna use the 1,000 kilograms over a meter cubed for the density of my water because I've got newtons, which is a kilogram meter over second. So that's why we wanna use. Um, uh, that's why we want to use the one with kilograms and meters instead of the ones with grams and centimeters. And then I multiply it by 9.8 meters per second squared. So that tells me that the volume of the fluid I displace is 1 times 10 to the minus 4 meters cubed. This actually works out really well. So that's the volume of my fluid that I displace. Okay, why did we need to get that? Well, we needed to get that so that we can get the density of our object. So the density of my object is going to be its mass divided by its volume. Now, whenever this, because this crown is fully submerged in the water, its total volume is equal to the volume of the fluid that it displaces. Unlike our ping pong ball that was floating in water, those two quantities were not equal. Now that this object is fully submerged, the crown's volume is exactly equal to the volume that it displaces of the fluid. And what's the mass of my object? Well, we already know that its weight in air is 7.84 newtons. So 7.84 newtons equals already its weight, its mass times gravity, its normal weight. So then if we divide 7.84 newtons by gravity, we get that the mass of this object is 0.8 kilograms. So we can use that right here. So the density of my object is then 0.8 kilograms divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 4 meter cubed. And so that gives me a density of my object of 8 times 10 to the 3 kilogram per meter cubed. Okay, is this gold? Unfortunately, it is not because the density of gold is equal to 1.93 times 10 to the 4 kilograms per meter cubed. So whatever this person picked up at the flea market, it's some alloy of some metal or maybe it's hollow in some points. So it is not fully made 100% um, of gold. And what we're going to do or what you're going to do for your lab is you're going to get the volume of the fluid that you displace of, of, of 10 hex nuts by dunking them in water, just like this. And then you're gonna use that volume to calculate the density of those hex nuts when you know what the weight of those hex nuts are whenever you're hanging them on the uh, force scale when they're not submerged in water. So you're essentially gonna do this same calculation but for your hex nuts instead of the crown and dunking them in water.